uh, this is just a coverage of the Kaizen with Moe SQL summary of just uh, what we've been doing throughout the week. And uh, this is basically integrating Python with databases. And in our case here, we'll be using the MySQL database. Um, so um, in lesson one, we covered introduction to Python with MySQL and uh, uh, we did the introduction to MySQL databases just to understand uh, what, how we go about them. Yeah, and we said, um, uh, we said uh, introduction to MySQL databases and we said under that, uh, my, uh, the SQL stands for the Structured Query Language and is widely used, uh, is a widely used programming language for managing relational databases. Now, SQL is the language, yeah, the programming language for managing the relational databases, yeah. Then my SQL is a relational database management system, whereas the Structured Query Language is the language used for handling the relational database management system using commands such as creating, inserting, updating, and deleting the data from the databases. So uh, we went after that, we went ahead into the installation of the MySQL driver and testing the MySQL connector. And um, under this, we covered uh, the definition of what a MySQL driver is. Yeah, and we said a database driver is a piece of software that allows an application to connect and interact with a database system. And uh, Python MySQL Connect is a Python driver which helps to integrate Python and MySQL. If you want to interact uh, with, if uh, we want to have an interaction between Python and MySQL, we have to use the Python MySQL connector. And this Python MySQL library allows the conversion between Python and MySQL data types. And the MySQL connector Python is usually available on pypi.org. And uh, so to install it, you usually use the pip command. Yeah. And uh, after, of course, after installing the, the MySQL Python connector, we need to test it to make sure that it's working correctly. And we are able to connect to the, you know, MySQL database server without any issues. And we did uh, some quite of examples here. So we did uh, the installation of the MySQL driver using the pip install method. And the code was pip install MySQL connector Python. And then we had to test or verify the MySQL connector so that we are able to, um, you know, we, we are able to operate or we're able to connect the MySQL database server without any issues. And of course, we said uh, if you do not get an error when you run this code, the import MySQL.connector code, then that means that your MySQL connector, uh, the MySQL Python connector has been installed um, successfully. Yeah. So after that, uh, we went ahead into creating connection to database. Um, how do we create a connection to a database? in Python or using Python. So to do this, you need the connect function, yeah? So from mysql.connector module, and this function does, I mean, takes in parameters like host, uh, the user, uh, the password, and returns the MySQL connection object. And you can receive these credentials as input from the user and pass them to the connect method. So uh, for you to use or for you to create a connection uh, to a MySQL database in Python, uh, you have to use the connect function. Yeah. And it usually takes the parameters such as host. Uh, the host is the server name. I mean, is the server that you're using. The username, we have the username and we have the password that you've already set. And under this, we, we, we briefly went through the procedure of um, installing the MySQL server, yeah, and I hope that was well captured. So um, so those are the parameters that uh, the, you know, the connect function takes in, yeah. And, uh, and we went through the different ways of establishing a connection. We had the first way, uh, and the first method here, we just used the connect method, establish connection using the connect method. 
So we have to, of course, we have to import the required libraries, then we have to connect from the server. And in this case, you had code your password, yeah? That was the first, uh, that was the first method. And remember we said, once you create a connection, you have to close that connection. Why do you close that connection? Be because uh, you want to avoid instances of um, unnecessary errors and um, uh, anything that would affect your performance, yeah? Or performance of your transaction. Uh, then uh, we went to method two where we used connection .con my SQL connection. Yeah, so this is different from the first one. The first one we used, we used the connect method, but in the second one, we're going to use dot my SQL connection method. Yeah, so of course the procedure is you have to import the required uh, libraries. And in our case here, we have from my SQL dot connector import connection. Then connecting to the server, you create an object by the name con. So it's uh, connection dot my SQL connection. So we have our parameters there. Remember, we have to have the username, we have to have the host, and we have to have the password. And in these two cases, or rather in this case as well, uh, you had code your details or the parameters. Then after that, you're supposed to disconnect, um, you're supposed to disconnect from your server by using the close function, yeah? So we went to method three, and uh, the third method, um, we use uh, we use the try with except block, yeah. And this is the most recommended method for connecting database. Why is it the recommended method? One, there are several important things to notice in the code, yeah. In the code, yeah. The code uh, using the try with except block. One, you should always deal with the exceptions that might be raised while establishing a connection to the MySQL server. This is why you use a try except block to catch and print any exceptions that might uh, that you might encounter. That means uh, when you use the try with except block, it helps you curb errors. And in this case, the errors are the ones being referred to as uh, exceptions, yeah? Uh, then, uh, so we have the uh, the try. This is where you use the try except block to catch any and uh, to catch and print any errors that you might come across when you're running your code. Yeah. Then we have uh, the second important thing you're supposed to note with this code is that you should always close the connection after you're done accessing the database. That is what we've been doing in the other, you know, in the other methods that we've uh, we've gone through. Uh, we use the close function or the close method, yeah? So uh, in this case, we you realize you're going to see that we do not have the close method, but now um, we usually use the, the, context mas uh, the context manager with, yeah? We have the with statement there. So you should always close the connection after you're done accessing the database. Uh, leaving unused open connections can lead to several unexpected errors and performance issues. So the above, uh, the code takes uh, advantage, uh, the code takes advantage, um, the code takes advantage of a context manager using with, which abstracts away the connection cleanup process. Yeah, we say the reason we, are, uh, we have to close the, uh, we have to close the connection is to avoid any un unnecessary, you know, errors, and uh, errors that would um, maybe affect the performance of a transaction, yeah? So um, in, in this particular code, we have the context manager with, which abstracts away connection cleanup process. That means uh, it automatically closes your connection and it helps in curbing the cleanup process, yeah? The cleanup process of your, you know, the unnecessary errors that might occur. Then we have the third um, important thing. Uh, you should never have code your login credentials. That is your username and password directly in a Python script. And this is a bad script for deployment and poses a serious security threat. So the above code, I mean, the code um, prompts the user for login credentials. It uses the built-in get pass module to hide the password. Well, this is... Um, 
This is better than hard coding. There are other more secure ways to store sensitive information like using environments. So in our case here, when you use the try with um, accept method, um, you're able to also, there is some sort of security assurance because you do not had uh, you do not hard code your credentials. You do not hard code your username, and you also don't hard code your um, your password. Yeah, so it's created in a way that it prompts the user to key in the username and the password. Yeah, and then we have the get pass module. The get pass module helps you in uh, you know it helps in hiding the password, so the password cannot be seen. Yeah, and that is the that is why. Uh, the try with accept block is uh, the most recommended method. It is the safest way of creating a connection or it is the safest way to go by when you're dealing with databases, yeah, when you want to interact with databases, yeah. And we have an example here. Of course, you have to import the required libraries. And in this case, we have the get pass. We need the get pass module so that we are able to hide our credentials, in particular, the password credential. Then we have the mysql.connector, import, import, I mean, import connect. Then now we have the block, try with accept block, where you have the parameters that you need. You have the host, we have the user, and you have the password, yeah? And you realize in this case, we do not hard code them, yeah? We just uh, write a code, enter username, and it's going to prompt you to enter the, enter the username and enter the password, all right? That was what we did in the first lesson. Uh, in the second lesson, um, remember this is just a summary of what we've covered. Uh, we were supposed to cover two areas, uh, creating of databases and creating of tables. And um, this is after creating a connection. So you have established a connection. You have connected to your MySQL server. Now you want to create a database, yeah? So how do you go about that? So to create a new database, you need to execute an SQL statement, create database, then you indicate the database name, yeah? So, or the, yeah, the name of the database that you want to create. So to execute an SQL query in Python, you need a CASA, to use a CASA. So we introduce a CASA method, which abstracts away the access to database records. So the CASA method usually helps in accessing the database records. And a query that needs to be executed is sent to CASA.execute in string format. And in this particular occasion, you'll need to send the database query uh, to CASA.execute. So one thing you're supposed to note is that you introduce the CASA method. Why do we introduce the CASA method? The CASA method will help us access the records, the database records. After that, um, uh, after that, we are able to, uh, if you want to execute a particular, you know, a particular query, yeah. And in this case, we are creating a database. So we want to execute the database query. We use the CASA, so we pass in our query in the CASA.execute method, all right? So uh, we have an example here. So creating databases. Um, so we have exam, of course, we are using the try with statement. Uh, so from get pass, import get pass. Of course, first you have to connect the, you know, you have to connect to the server. So up to there, we connect to the server, yeah? Then after that, we now create an object. And our object in this case is create DB query. And um, uh, now we pass um, uh, we pass our you know our statement or our query. And our query here is create database and the name of the database that you're creating. Then remember we have said we have to use the CASA method. And uh, so with connection.casa as CASA, so we have to execute for you to execute any query in Python. For SQL, you have to use now the casa.execute. This is where we pass in our query, yeah? And in this case, remember we had uh, we had uh, created an object by the name create DB query, yeah? And that is what we will be using. So that is how you create a database, yeah? So in case you want to show the existing database, uh, the 
the method that you usually use, yeah, or the statement that is usually used when uh, showing the existing databases is the show database. All right, that is the statement, or rather, that is the query that is usually used for uh, showing the existing databases. Yeah, so of course, remember the first thing you're supposed to remember is to create a connection that has to be there, and you have to first create a connection with your SQL server. Then, after that, you want to um, you want to show the particular, I mean, you want to show the databases. Yeah, so that is the code, or rather, this is the script that is used. Then, um, yeah, so you, uh, so you run that. So in the first example of creating a database, uh, we used the try with accept method uh, or try with accept block. And we have another example where we don't have to use the try with accept block. Uh, we just have to create a connection. Yeah, so this is uh, just a normal way. So we import the required modules. So in our case, import mysql.connector, then um, mysql.connector.connect. Remember, you have to use the connect method. Then you pass in your parameters, the username, the host, and the password. Then um, you assign, uh, remember, we have to use the mycasa, like, uh, like uh, we have to use the casa method. We have to introduce the casa method. So mycasa. Um, my casa equal to my db dot casa. So uh, my db dot casa. Then after that, we have to use the execute method uh, where we pass in our, that is where we pass in our query, the create database. And in this case, you're creating the my database. Uh, that is the my database database. Yeah. Then we have uh, the other method to check if the database exists. Uh, we remember the remember whatever changes is just the code, but the SQL query will always remain the same. Remember the method that we have used when we were using the uh, the try with accept method. We still use the query show databases. Yeah. So as I've, I've been mentioning that if you're good with SQL, then there is no way this will be hard for you. Because if you're good with the codes, uh, I mean the SQL queries, then you'll just need to, you know, you're just writing the same SQL queries. Just that in this case, in the Python case, you're creating, you have to create an object. Okay. So, um, so we created a new database. Now we want to uh, connect to an existing database. How do we go about that? To connect to an existing database, the only thing you need to do, you see, the parameters that you are con um, that we were passing under the connect method, we they were the hosts, user, and password, yeah, for connecting to the MySQL database. Now, I mean the MySQL server. Now, in this case, you're connecting to an existing database. You will only need to add a parameter database and the name of the database, yeah, and uh, that will be it, yeah. Then you'll be good to go. Now you follow the same method, just that you have added the parameter. You have added an extra parameter that is the database, and you specify the specific. You specify the database that you want to connect to. All right. I hope that is clear. Yeah. So that was creating databases. Then we went ahead into creating tables. And we said a table is a collection of data organized in form of rows and columns. And data, I mean, table is present within a database. Okay. So we are creating tables inside databases. All right. And the rows are usually called tuples. Yeah. Or, or rather, they in form of tuples. And columns are called the attributes of the table. Yeah. So to create a table in MySQL, you use the create table statement. And to create a new table, you need to pass uh, this query. Now we have to pass the query create table uh, to casa.execute, which accepts a MySQL query and executes the query on the connected MySQL database. Yeah. And also notice the we have to use the connection.commit statement at the end of the code 
and by default mysql connected does not auto commit transaction yeah so in mysql modifications mentioned in a transaction only occur when a commit command is at the end yeah so we have to have the commit command dot commit command at the end of our statement so that any changes or any modifications that are made uh, on our transactions are recorded in the in the actual table or rather they are updated in the actual table yeah so and we have the we have the method uh, here um, here is the code or the or rather the script um, um, this is the script uh, for creating tables remember we're using the the try with except um, block so of course the first bit covers the modules that you might need excuse me so then we go to the try with except block of course you have to pass in your parameters the host name the you know the host that is the server that you're using or the server that you're connecting to then the username the password then you have to of course you have to have the database name that you're trying to create uh, the table uh, then you have um, now you uh, after that you pass in your you know you create an object which contains the query for creating the table that you want to create and in this case we are creating the movies table and uh, we had to specify you know we had to specify the the the, the you know the components of our table here yeah or rather the attributes of our table we have the id column which is supposed to be an integer and it's auto increasing and it's a primary key that is to mean it's a unique key then we have title that is to mean if it's a unique key it cannot be repeated yeah then we have the title it's in form of a virtual uh, data type uh, we have the release year which is in form of the year data type uh, we have the journal column which is in form of the virtual uh, data type then we have collection in millions uh, which is in an integer um, uh, data type in form of an integer data type then we have to of course we close the query there so we created the object by the name create ratings table uh, query yeah uh, then um, so this should have been create um, movies table query yeah because we want we are creating the movies table query we are creating the movies table and uh, remember we've mentioned of course you have to pass your query uh, into the execute dot execute method then you have to have the connection dot commit and we said for any changes to be recorded on the actual table yeah any modifications that are being made in the transaction i mean the transaction that particular transaction you have to use the dot commit method yeah and we said it's not it's not automated yeah therefore that is why we have to automatic i mean we have to just indicate dot commit method yeah so we created the three tables this was the movies table uh then we went to the reviewers table then we went to the ratings table yeah that is how we created the tables so to show the existing tables uh the only thing that you need to i mean the the sql statement that you use is the show table statement yeah and the show table statement, um, uh, you pass it as a, you know, you uh, you pass it as an object, and you pass it in the dot execute method. Uh, then um, you finish up or you complete your script there. That is how you show tables, the existing tables. Yeah. Uh, then in our lesson three, we went to now uh, operations in Python with MySQL. And under that, you are supposed to show a data schema using the describe statement, modify a table using the alter statement, deleting tables using the drop statement, and inserting records in tables. So uh, the first bit, we covered showing a, uh, a table schema. 
uh, using the described statement. And after creating a table, you want to now see uh, what are the components or, or, or rather what are the attributes in my table, yeah? We use the describe table name statement, yeah? And in Python, to get some results back from the cursor, you need to use the cursor.fetchAll. Yeah, remember, we want to look at the schema. We want to show the components of our table schema. So we really need to get into the, you know, we, we, we want to get into the details of that table. So for you to get the details of that table, you use the cursor.fetchAll. So this method fetches all the rows from the last executed uh, statement, assuming you're already having the MySQL connection object in the connection variable, you can print out all the results fetched by using the cursor.fetchAll. So when we are doing the operations in Python, we now introduce, we introduce um, an, uh, a method by the name cursor.fetchAll, yeah? cursor.fetchAll. So that is how we show the table schema. We use the described statement. Uh, then, of course, to fetch the rows, we have to uh, use the dot fetch all method. Yeah. So uh, when you run that code, it's supposed to show you the details of your table, that particular table. So that was under, you know, uh, showing the table schema. Then you went into modifying a table schema using the alter statement. Now we have already created our table. What if we want to alter, uh, or what if we want to modify the, you know, the components or the attributes, the different attributes in the table? So we usually use the alter table statement. Yeah, and you have an example here. Uh, of course, uh, you uh, you have the the modules that you need, the get plus module and uh, the connect module. Uh, then we put in our connection details. Then after that, you have to create an object by the name alter table query. And um, alter table, now the statement that we use here, we want to alter the table movies. Yeah, so that is where we have the alter table. Then you specify the table that you want to uh, modify. And um, so we want, what do we want to do? So we want to alter that table by modifying the column. So that is where we have the modify columns. Then you specify the column that you want to modify. Yeah, collection in millions. Remember, our collection in millions column was in form of um, an integer data type. Now we want to modify it to decimal, uh, to decimal data type. Yeah, so we modify column collection in millions. And now we want it to be in decimal data type. Um, that is now the object that we created. Um, now you have to show the described movies table. Then you continue. Uh, so we have to uh, we have two uh, objects here. One we have the alter table query object. Then we have the show table query object. So of course to execute the queries you have to use dot execute. So we have to. Uh, we have to pass in the alter table query object and the show table query in the execute methods um, separately. Then you want to get the rows after modification. So of course we have to. Uh, you have to use the dot fetch all yeah method. Then you print the rows yeah. Then um, this is just now this is supposed to show you. Um, the modification that we've made on our end, yeah? And it's going to show the rows, yeah? So uh, remember we were modifying the collection in millions uh, uh, column into a decimal type of um, data and uh, the changes have been made, yeah? So that is how we modify objects. Uh, then we went into deleting tables and we used the drop statement. So to delete a table, you need to execute the drop statement uh, in MySQL, and deleting a table is an irreversible process. Yeah. So once you delete the table, it is deleted for good. So in case you are supposed to use uh, the table, uh, maybe in the upcoming task, you might need now to, uh, you know, to create the table again. Yeah. So remember that. So you have to be careful as you're trying to delete your table. Be careful. 
if you are not supposed to, then don't. Yeah. So we have the um, so we have the the meeting tables making the drop statement. This is the example that we we used. So in this particular case, we dropped the the ratings table. So of course you have to create a connection. Then after that, uh, you drop the. Of course you have to create an object. The object contains the SQL query that you want to run. Yeah. So the, our object name is drop table query, and the SQL query there is drop table ratings. Yeah. Then after that, you now execute the, you execute the, you know, the query there, and it's going to, yeah, to delete the table successfully. Yeah. Then to show the existing tables whether we have deleted our table. Now, in our case here, because uh, we are dealing with the online movie rating table, uh, show now the tables. Remember the showing uh, tables uh, query. Yeah. And in our case now, we, we've already deleted the rating table. Now we have the movie table and the reviewers table only. Okay. Uh -huh. So after that, um, I had to recreate the table, the ratings table after the mission again. So I just did the, you know, the code that we had used because you are supposed to use the ratings table afterwards. Okay. So after that, we went into inserting records in tables. Now we need to populate these tables. Now we, we created the database. We created the tables. Now we want to populate the tables. And to do this, we use two methods. We have the dot execute method, which usually works well when the number of records is small and the records can be hard coded. Yeah. And then we have the execute dot many. I mean, sorry, dot execute many method, uh, which is more popular and is better suited for real world scenarios. And we say the dot execute many is the most, um, I'd say, the most efficient way of using the, you know, of inserting records. Uh, reason being, you really do not have to hard code your records because as you're hard coding the record, then you're prone to, you know, elimination of some records. Yeah, so that is why the, the execute menu is the, is the most recommended method. Yeah, and the dot execute menu adds best two parameters. So you have the query, which contains the placeholders for the records that need to be inserted. And a list that contains all the records that you wish to insert. Yeah. And we had uh, the example here. And in our first example of inserting records, we did insert records into the movies table. And uh, of course, uh, we used the dot execute. Um, we used the dot execute method. So we actually had to hard code. Um, we had to hard code our records. Yeah. As you can see. So first. Of course, you import the most necessary or the most required uh, modules. Then you create a connection. Then you want to, now we create an object which contains the SQL query of the insertion of the records. So our object name is insert movies query. And inside that, we have the insert into, of course, you have to use that statement. That is our query. Insert into the movies table. You have to specify uh, the column. So we have the title column, the release year, the journal column, collection in millions column. Then now we go to the values and now we insert the values directly. Yeah. We had code the uh, we had code the values. Yeah. Then after that, of course, you uh, you execute um, you execute your object, your object name there and connection.commit. The reason we are using the connection that commit is because we are updating our table. So we need this update to be recorded on the actual table. So we have to use the dot commit statement. Yeah. Um, so after that, uh, so we used the first example, we, we used the dot execute many, I mean the dot execute method. And now we have the dot execute many method that is uh, the other. Exa uh, the other method and the most recommended method, and we say the dot the dot execute many method can include two parameters, um, and the first parameter is the query. Yeah, in our case here we have the query, which is the of course the we have created the query insert into reviewers table, and we specify now that is the query, and the other uh, parameter is the
the record uh, parameter, which is which is usually in form of a list, yeah, a list of tuples, yeah. So uh, we have the reviewer's record, and it's uh, it's in form of a list of tuples. So we have our records there. Uh, then of course we have to pass in the parser.exefit many. We have to pass in our two parameters, the query parameter and the list par parameters. Then we have the connection.commit. So after that, um, after that we now created the two other tables, the reviewers table and the ratings table. Uh, the ratings table using the .exefit many parameter. I mean, sorry, .exefit many method. So we went to um, a lesson four where we were continuing with the contradictions in Python, and in this case, we we covered reading records from the database, filtering records from I mean using the WAR cloud, handling multiple tables, uh, updating and deleting records from the database, and performing the transaction. So uh, the first one, um, reading records from the database. So uh, you've already created your table. I mean your database, your table, and now you have inserted records into your table. Now the other thing is we want to read the records into your table. I mean the records uh, from the database, yeah. So to retrieve records, you need to send a select query to cassa.execute method. So when you use uh, cassa.fetch all to then you use the cassa.fetch all method to extract the retrieved table in form of a list of rows or records. Yeah, so we want to read in the records, and for you to read in the records, um, you use the, of course, you use the select statement, that is the select query. You pass in the select query into the cassa.execute method, and uh, you use the cassa.fetch all so that you're able to uh, get the details of the rows. Yeah, so uh, we create a connection, then after that, we select. Um, of course, we create a select query method or the select query. We give it an object name, select movies query. Then we pass in our object name, yeah, uh, to the casa.execute method, casa.fetch all. And there we go. We have our, our details there, yeah. We have the particular details, yeah. And in this case, uh, we had limited, we have the limit function there that is to mean we limit it to a particular figure so in this case this is uh we have two numer numerics here so the first one the two here represents the position that is uh, your starting point yeah or the offset so our offset here is the second row then uh the second parameter here it's supposed to show you the number of records that you need yeah so uh uh, what basically this the two five means is that we are counting from the second or we want our records uh, to to begin from the second row and it should from there we we need five records yeah I hope that is clear so the limit function there there are those times that you just use one you know one parameter. Uh, like limit it to five, that is to mean you limit it to five records. You only want to read the first five records, yeah? But in this case, you have to, uh, when you have two figures, the first one is usually the offset, then the other one is the number of records that you want to read, okay? Then you went into filtering records using the where clause, and you say this is some sort of a condition, yeah? So when selecting records from a table, you can filter the selection using the where statement. And uh, when you use you use the limit clause uh, to constrain the number of records that you uh, that are received and um, that are received from the select statement. And in MySQL, the limit clause takes two, one or two non-negative numeric arguments, and I've explained that. Yeah. Then after that, we have sort the result. So you use the order by statement to sort the result in either ascending order or descending order. Those, this is optional or it depends on the task that you've been given. Then uh, the order by keyword sorts the result ascending by default. Yeah. So to sort the result in descending order, you have to use the descending 
I mean the descending keyword, okay? So um, most of the time, uh, we usually use the order by statement hand in hand with the, you know, the where clause, yeah? That is why we have it here. And we had an example here. So we filtered, you know, filtering results using the where statement. So, um, of course, you have to select because you're kind of reading records and you're reading, I mean, you're filtering records. That is to mean you have to first read the records, then you filter them uh, according to your condition, yeah, to that particular condition. So we have to select and we select now. In this case, we select uh, this particular column, the title column, the collection in millions column from the movies table. Yeah, and uh, where now we have we introduce our where clause here, uh, where collection in millions is greater than three hundred million dollars. Now that is the condition. Then we order by the collection in millions in a descending order, right? So then we pass in our, of course, our our query to dot execute, then uh, casa dot fetch all so that you can see in details yeah so uh the condition here was we needed the title column the collection in millions column so we have the title column here and the collection in millions column pair right and uh we what we wanted the condition was the collection in million uh should be greater than 300 million dollars and um, then that should be arranged or it should be in order of or it should be uh, in the in a descending order. So that is to mean from the highest to the lowest, but the limit is uh, the collection in millions column that you want to display should be greater than $300 million. And that's it. That is what we have there, okay? So um, so if you, if you don't want to use the limit clause and you need to fetch all the records, then the CASA object has the fetch one, and the fetch, I mean, the dot fetch many methods as well, yeah? So if you don't want to feed, I mean, if you don't want to, um, if you don't want to uh, use the limit clause, you can use the, you can use the dot fetch one or dot fetch many methods. Uh, and the dot fetch one usually retrieves the next row, only one row, the next row of the result as a tuple or none if, uh, no more rows are available. Then you have the dot fetch many, which retrieves the next rows, the next set of rows from the result as a list of tuples. Uh, and it has a size argument. You have to specify the size, yeah, which defaults to one that you can use to specify, uh, that you can use to specify the number of rows you need to fetch. If no more rows are available, then the method uh, is going to return an empty list. So try retrieving the titles of the first, uh, the five highest grossing movies concatenated with their release years again. And we did that example, yeah. So um, using the dot fetch many, and we say the dot fetch many has uh, the size argument. So we have created our connection. Uh, we have our query here. The query is we select title, release year from the movies, and limit to five, yeah. So with connection.casa as casa, so we execute our query pair. And uh, so in this case, we do the fetch all, yeah? This one is for fetch all. Uh, we use the fetch all method, yeah? Yeah, that is for the fetch all. Then, um, uh, I think this is for Fetching, I mean, this is for when you're using a limit clause. We said when you're using the fetch, the fetch menu, uh, you don't use the limit clause, yeah, because you already have the fetch menu. What we do, we just specify the, you know, the number, I mean, the size of the argument size is introduced, yeah. Then we went into handling multiple tables using the join statement. Uh, and in this case, we say using the joint statement, you can combine two or more tables based on a related column between them. Yeah, and this was the key thing, based on a related column between them by using a join statement. And we did an example here. And uh, we were trying to join 
So we selected uh, the columns that we needed to join. Uh, we had the total columns and the rating, the average of the rating column as average rating uh, from the rating um, uh, from the ratings uh, table. And we were in a joint unit with uh, the movies table. And our uh, the related column here was the ID column from the movies table and the movie ID column from the ratings table. Then we were supposed to group it, uh, to group it by the movie ID column, yeah, and order by average rating in a descending order. Then we were supposed to use five. Uh, we only used five um, records, yeah. We only need the five records there. Yeah, uh, so we needed the first five records and that follow that. Um, and here we are. So our first five records that follow the, that particular uh, condition or that, uh, that we're supposed to join in with, yeah, do the inner join. Uh, this is the outcome. Then we did another example. Yeah. And in our second example, um so uh we were con we we were trying to connect um we were trying to connect the you know the names of the reviewer with the highest number of ratings the name of the reviewers with the highest number of ratings and uh so select concatenate so we had to concatenate the first name and the last name column and we count all as new yeah, so we have introduced another column by the name new. So from the reviewers table, and we are in a joining that with the ratings table. Yeah, and the related column there is the ID column in the reviewers table and the reviewer ID column in the ratings table. So we are supposed to group it by the reviewer table, I mean the reviewer ID column and order by the, uh, the new um, column in a descending order and we limit it to one, okay? Then it's going to give us the name of that um, particular reviewer with the highest number of reviews, yeah? So after that, uh, that was the joining segment. We went into updating the table. So you can update the existing records in a table by using the update statement, yeah? Um, and the update statement, um, we just need to create an object uh, and in our case here, the name of the object is update movie story. Then we update the table that we want to update. And then what do we want to update? So that is why we have the set, the last name, the Cooper. Yeah, so in, in our scenario here, we had uh, one of the reviewers who had been married. Yeah, and we wanted to change the last name. Yeah, from the previous name to now Cooper. Yeah, they had been married to Cooper. So the last name has been changed to Cooper. Where now the condition is the first name is Ahmed. Yeah, so that is how. So you update the reviewers table. In the reviewers table, you set where the last name is. I mean, we want to set the last name as Cooper, where the first name is Ahmed. Right? Then of course data. I mean, Casa dot execute then you have to commit because we need this to be updated in the actual table, yeah? Then we went into the delete command and under that, uh, deleting records work very similarly, similarly to uh, updating records. So you use the delete statement to remove selected records. No, delete is an irreversible process. So if you don't want, I mean, if you don't use the where clause, then all the records from the specified table will be deleted and you'll need to run the insert into query again to get past the deleted records. So it's recommended that you first run a, uh, a select query with the same filter to make sure that you're deleting the, re the right records. So it is advisable that you first use the select query so that you're able to, just to be sure of the records that you want to delete, then you can go ahead and delete the uh, records. So we did an example there and we have said first uh, select the records that you want. Yeah. 
So if I select the records that we want to delete, of course we use the select method. So we want to select the reviewer ID, maybe ID columns from the rating table where the reviewer ID is two. Yeah, so we have selected that. We have selected that, then now you go ahead and delete the records. Yeah, so you delete the query and uh, delete from the rating uh, where reviewer ID equals to two after confirming. So you just pass that query, the delete query, yeah, query on the hazard.execute. Then uh, for the records to be, um, you know, updated in the actual table, you use the dot commit method. So that was it, yeah. Um, that was it under uh, uh, deleting records. Then we went ahead into performing transactions. And we say transactions, anything, any, any operation or any task that you have that you're using the MySQL or that, uh, that we have an integration between MySQL and Python, that is a transaction. And we say transactions ensure the data consistency of the database. And we have to make sure that more than one application must not modify the records while performing the while performing the database operation. And now we have the properties of transactions. There has to be atomicity. So uh, either the transaction completes or nothing happens. Yeah. So if a transaction contains four queries, then all the queries will be executed, or none of them will be executed. Then we have consistency. We say the database must be consistent before the transaction starts, and the database, the database must also be consistent after the transaction is completed. Then we have isolation. Uh, intermediate results of our transactions are not visible outside the parent transaction, and then we have durability. Once a transaction has been committed, the effects are persistent, even after a system failure. That is such an advantage that you won't lose, you know, you won't lose all your work. If the system has a failure, as long as the transactions had been committed, then the effects are persistent, yeah? So um, then we went to managing MySQL transactions in Python, and we followed the following steps, or rather these are the steps that are supposed to be followed. You create the MySQL database connection in Python, and you have seen that we had to first create, a, I mean, you have to first create a connection, prepare the SQL queries that you might want to run as part of transaction, set an auto commit property of MySQL connection to be false, execute all queries one by one using the hazard.execute. If all queries execute successfully, commit the changes to the database. And if one of the queries fails to execute, then roll back all the changes, catch all the, you know, catch any SQL exceptions that may occur during the process. And that is where we use the try with except, uh, we had been using that method, then close the CASA object and uh, my SQL database connection. That is the procedure that is usually used or followed when you want to do any, you know, perform any transaction in Python, right? I hope that was uh, well captured and that was basically the summary of uh, the Python with MySQL module, yeah? I hope that was well captured and um, uh, we have a project, so kindly just try your best and do the project just for you, uh, just to check if you were at par with the class, yeah? And in case you have a query, kindly, Feel free to reach out.